G'day. Thanks for joining me for a word in season. It's a privilege to be with you again. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. I learned those words in school. And that psalm, Psalm 23, clearly the most loved and best known in Scripture, has profoundly impacted our history, but it continues to impact our culture. In music, from rap to reggae to punk rock to alternative, uh, in movies from westerns to suspense movies to romances to war films, it is in our art, It's, it's in our novels. And I think it's because at the heart of that psalm, there is a a deep growing intimate relationship with the Lord, a good shepherd who will not leave us even in the valley of the shadow of death. And in the heart of every human being, there's a hunger, a deep hunger for that sort of love, a love that will know us completely, but accept us fully and transform us. When our boys were really tiny, still in nappies, I was dashing out one morning and one of them was squatting on his haunches and staring at something and he was so transfixed it stopped me in my track. So I went over without a word, squatted down next to him. A huge plant with very broad leaves had water running down the leaf, forming on the tip and just as the drop let go and fell to the ground, there was this burst of like diamond light. And when it happened, I just went, wow. And the little guy just simply looked at me and went, and then went back to looking at the water. See, he was lost in wonder, a wonder that I was just dashing past. And yet I sang the hymn about being lost in wonder, love and praise. And the word in season that came to me for this week was those words, he leads me beside the quiet waters. And And with impact, two things came to me. One, do you notice the order? First, he takes us to the green pastures and the quiet waters and then leads us out on the path of righteousness or the paths of righteousness. That's the opposite to me. I dash out on the path and come back to God when I'm exhausted and need refreshing. He does it the other way around and for a very good reason. You see, the sheep don't know. They don't know where the best pasture is. They don't know where the refreshing waters are. The shepherd knows that. For sheep to lie down, several things have to happen. They have to be free of hunger, hence the pasture. They have to be free of predators. They're a prey animal. They have to be free of dangerous pests like flies that strike them. And all of that protection and provision comes from the shepherd. You know, at the start of lockdown, I had this list of things I was going to achieve by the quiet waters. I was going to get my study in order. I was going to do jigsaws with Merle. I was going to read books and walk. Well, we, I did read some books and we did walks more than we used to, but the study is untouched and the jigsaw is still in the box. But that's not a problem really, because pastoral ministry, ministry necessarily involves administration and chores and tasks and preparation that's part of it and brother Lawrence found a deep relationship to God intimate worship in the midst of a noisy kitchen in a Paris monastery now see the thing that prevents me being by the quiet waters and keeps me from the shepherd is busyness I'm so busy Eugene Peterson puts it this way How can I lead people to the quiet place beside the still waters if I'm in perpetual motion? I know I can't be busy and pray. I can be active and pray. I can work and pray. But I cannot be busy and pray. I cannot be inwardly rushed or distracted or dispersed. Now he and others suggest why I'm busy. All of the suggestions are accurate and none of them are pleasant. I'm busy because of insecurity and pride. If I'm busy, I must be important. Or I'm busy because I lack faith and trust. I mean, God couldn't possibly do it unless I'm busy helping. Or I'm just lazy because being busy is easy. All you've got to do is keep saying yes and everybody else fills your life up. Do you remember Dan talking just before Corona and he said, when we stuff up, we tend to withdraw from God. 
but God doesn't. In our mess, God steps in. He stepped into this messed up world in Jesus and he steps in to transform. When Thomas asked the good shepherd, Jesus, Lord, how can we know the way? Jesus said, I am the way. He leads me beside the still waters. He restores my soul. In Hebrew, and incidentally, it's the same in Aramaic, the language Jesus and the disciples spoke, the words for still waters are my menachot, and it means restful waters, peaceful waters. He is our peace. Sashalom, the Prince of Peace. His peace will stand guard over our hearts and minds. It's his gift to us. My peace I give you, John 16. These are uncertain and unprecedented times to us, but not to him, not to the shepherd. I love the way that Peterson translates, you refresh and restore my soul. He says, you let me catch my breath. Jesus breathed on the disciples after his resurrection. And he longs to breathe on me and certainly on you. So let me conclude by saying this. If you make room, God promises he will come. If you ask him how to make room, he will show you. And may he grant you the grace to make that committed decision in his strength to start with time for him. Start by the refreshing waters before anything else. In your diary, make him first. Father, thank you that you are the one who steps into our mess to transform. Jesus, thank you that you are the good shepherd. And you never leave us. Holy Spirit, come and grant us first your rest and then that we might be your vessels to pour your love into a hurting world. Amen. Thanks and God bless.